Welcome everyone to today's Empyrean Workshop Showcase. Join me as we take a look at the Warpig Deluxe. Today's design is the Warpig Deluxe, which is an unlock level 20 size class 2 capital vessel coming to us from creator Killer Tofu. Now this design has been doing really well on the workshop and I can see why it has an interesting looking design that stands out from the normal designs we see for capital vessels. And it also has the complimentary pig snout look at the very front. Starting at the rear of the ship, we do have a ramp leading up to one hangar door, as well as a pair of hangar doors directly above that. Underneath the ship, between some of the landing gear, we do have a shutter door that will open when you approach, and this gives you access from the foot level into the main elevator shaft. Here we are in the lower hangar bay area, which is obviously for your hover vessels. And as you can see, we do have a sign on the wall that says to activate the switch for a hangar door and ramp. There is no automatic motion sensor logic in the ship, so if you want to add it, you will have to put it in yourself as the creator says, or wait until he gets it updated later with that logic added to it. We do have some storage lockers in here, but next to the elevator, you see we have an O2 station, an armor locker, a large constructor. We also have a medic station, repair station, your repair bay control console, and two cargo boxes up the set of stairs. And of course, we have the repair bay module itself in the middle of the hangar area. Underneath the raised platform, you will find six of your exterior lower thrusters. So of course, be careful if these are on when you're in this area. Continuing up the elevator to the next level, we enter into a small hallway area where we have some cargo boxes on the walls immediately to our sides. Towards the front of the ship, we have our gravity generator and another large constructor, as well as a door that actually leads to an LCD frame, which is simply there to tell you that this is for future expansion or for you to remove if you have maybe perhaps a vessel that can dock on the outside. Lining the walls in this section, you'll find things such as cargo boxes and fuel storage. And in here, we are directly underneath our warp drive, as well as next to the warp drive fuel tank with a matching colored cargo box for your warp drive fuel. And you'll see some RCS. Continuing through the door, we come into our small vessel hangar. In this hangar, you'll find fuel tanks and cargo boxes in the wall, as well as a medic station, an armor locker, and an O2 station. There are also mounting points for either a set of sentry guns or for you to mount a very small SV up top above the door. And on the sides of the big open area, we do have markings for where you can dock small vessels when they dock to the sides of the wall. As with the hangar bay below for the hover vessels, you do have a manual switch for opening the doors to allow you to fly out of here. The next level up brings us to our medical bay area where you see we have our four medical scanners as well as a food processor here for making medical supplies. Turning around, you'll find some decorative cryo chambers as well as your medic station and a clone chamber plus two cargo bosses embedded in the wall next to the ramp. On one side of the room, we have a shower, whereas on the other side of the room, behind the door, we have a toilet. Going up the ramp, the door on the left brings us into the main crew quarters area where we have bunk beds, we have a lounge area, we have some storage for their clothes and armor, as well as a fridge for them. The door to the right leads into the captain's quarters because it has its own standalone bed, its own closet and wardrobe storage, as well as its own fridge in this room. The next level up is just a very short little room that has basically access to some of your oxygen storage, but nothing really else going on in here. And continuing on up, we come to the bridge area. In here, we have one pilot seat and two passenger seats, as well as a nice decorative view outside with some displays, and we have four switches lining the walls. Here we have thrusters and RCS on one switch, as well as a turbo mode on another switch. Obviously, you need thrusters and RCS on just to fly, and of course, turbo gives you a little bit of a boost. However, in testing, I found that turbo does less of a boost than what you would expect. Turbo only gives you a very minor boost to your overall top speed, but does more for your acceleration, however, not by much. Of course, here you have a weapon switch for turning on your weapons and retracting turrets when you don't need them. But the more interesting switch is the one for the non-essentials, which of course turns off things such as the repair bay, repair stations, your constructors, some of the lights, things like that. But most importantly, it also turns off LCDs. It of course leaves on its own LCD, however, turns off all the others. And while you might be thinking this actually doesn't have that big of an effect on your power usage, 
you might be surprised as I was to find that it has a noticeable effect when even a single LCD is turned on. On each of the sides, we do have additional fridges, which are left out of the non-essential switch, so you don't have to worry about having your food spoil. The brown door in here gives you access to a toilet in case you get sick. On the sides of the elevator, there are black doors, and each of these leads outside to one of the pig's ears, which is basically a landing pad area for a smaller SV. Each of these landing pads also has a shutter door concealing access to one of the lower thrusters. On one side, we have a repair station and an O2 station, whereas the other side next to the black doors, we have a medic station and an ammo box set. And then right here in the middle on the back side of the elevator, we have an armor locker. And then turning all the way around, you find we have our core readily visible right here in the middle. Walking past the core on either side, you have a door that leads out to another landing pad area which is marked off and to me seems more like an escape pod area because of the available size and placement of it on the ship. An important part to note here is that this block that looks like circuitry is one of the blocks concealing access to the core, which puts the core at a very vulnerable spot in my opinion if you are using this for PvP. Coming to the top of the elevator, we enter into an engineering area where we have access to many of our smaller thrusters as well as the one extra large thruster at the back of the head of the ship. We also have generators and our one advanced constructor up here. Once again, this is the Warpig Deluxe and it is an unlock level 20 size class 2 capital vessel. This comes with 21 fuel tanks for a total capacity of 44,700 fuel. With the non-essential switch turned on, but everything else turned off, you have 52 hours of use. Turning off all of the non-essentials though will give you over 100 hours of use at the sacrifice of having no lights, no LCD screens, no production of any kind, just basically for when you're sitting there needing to conserve power. With 6 oxygen tanks, this can hold 10,000 O2 and needs 1,395 to fill it up. The ship comes with 4 ventilators total, however I think that it could have been cut down to 3 because 2 of the ventilators are right there outside in the floor next to the core, one of each feeding the different habitat rooms. Instead of having one ventilator in each of the crew quarters rooms, you could have had one ventilator going between them both and that would have simplified things a little bit. This also comes with 3 oxygen stations, 4 medic stations, and the one clone chamber. For weaponry, it comes with four cannon turrets, four rocket launchers, two flak turrets, and two rocket turrets. It carries a total of 24 cargo boxes, as well as two ammo boxes. It also has four fridges, one food processor, and three constructors total, two of them large and one of them advanced. For build costs, this obviously is going to have a lot of iron and sapphium in it. However, it's also notable the 3,350 neodymium needed for it, and you will need a decent amount of cobalt, arrestrum, and zascosium. And of course, the design requires one gold bar because of the NPC in the medic bay. Overall, I like the design because it has a different shape than what we normally get, and it does have that little inclusion of the pig theme with the snout on the front. While I can appreciate the extra little docking areas on the sides that function like ears and of course the small landing pad on the back of the ship, I am one that much prefers a larger singular landing pad area if possible because of the two hangar bays and the three landing bays being smaller size, you are limited in what hover vessels and small vessels you can use with this ship. It's well armed enough also to handle most of your problems in single player. However, this is definitely not for PvP. First off, the cockpit area is enclosed in glass, which won't take much for them to get through and kill you. But more importantly, the core is not secured by that many layers of defensive blocks, and it is easy to know where to fire if somebody is coming up against you because it has a very noticeable block at the back. Now the ship is decent on maneuverability in terms of how fast it can turn around, but it has a very poor side to side strafing speed and the top speed is not that great. Because of the slower strafing speed, I definitely would not want to use this going up against any major POIs because you're not going to be able to dodge that many blasts. Once again, this is the War Pig Deluxe by Killer Tofu, and if you would like to try it out in your own game, I will have a link in the description below. If you try it out and like it, be sure to leave a thumbs up and a nice comment on the workshop page for Killer Tofu. That is it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave me a like, leave me a comment below, and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. As always, I'm your host, Mr. Spicy. 
Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to keep it spicy this week, and I will see you in the next video.